Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can find me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. Okay, continuing the series of, of videos on, on sharpening um, and letting you see what edges look like underneath the microscope and giving you examples of what to look for and feel for um, since you probably won't have a, a nice microscope set up like this. Um, the next on our list is going to be edge angles. Now edge angles we're going to do, we're probably going to do a two part on this one so we're going to cover edge angles and uh, pressure and um, stone selection. Okay, um, just going to do a basic quick run on this one um, and then we'll probably go ahead and, and sharpen up a knife on this next video. Okay, or we might do it on this one too. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, so what I've got now is I've got my Victor Inox So if we take the knife from the side and then turn it to where we're looking straight down at the edge, okay? Now this is the one that I sharpened in a video a couple of days ago. Mess the edge up some. Not a whole lot. I mean, it's just seen a little bit of use. So down in here, you can see there's not hardly any light reflecting at all. I mean, there's a very, very faint piece here. There's a little bit here, goes back to just faint, and then some heavier stuff up in here. All right, but you can see that light being reflected. We'll even, we'll see if we can't zoom in on it a little bit and make it a little bit plainer. There we go. Okay, so right up in here, there's some light reflecting. Um, it's honestly, it's not a whole lot. I would probably go another week or so um, with this knife before before I sharpen it up again. But we're going to go ahead and say, okay, well, there's a little bit of light, uh, or you know, a little bit of light, a little more, a little more in here, and hardly anything down to nothing right here. So let's go ahead and fix that. Let's take the knife. Crystalline combination coarse fine and let's rub that edge off. That's a horrible sound, isn't it? Okay So there is no more light and the edge or no more uh, no more edge really Really good. Oh, yeah, look at that Okay, so all that side-to-side -side movement, um, not only did we abrade the edge away, but we also rolled part of it back and forth a little bit, okay? So, now that we've got re light reflecting, and we can see it along the entire length of the edge, now what we're going to do is we're going to take our magic marker. Remember, I like red, blue, or, or green for this, okay? And we're going to mark that edge up. so that we can see what we're going to be sharpening away. Okay, so we got a nice red line where the edge bevels are. Now remember, what we're doing here is like the point of a pencil. Let's bring you all the way out on this, show you the point of a pencil. Now let's grab another pencil. Not much left of that one to hold on to. <coughs> okay. Boy, is that backed out as much as we can get? That is backed out as much as we can get. Okay, so bear with me a little bit here. What we're going to need to do on this edge is if this is our, our edge right here. Now granted this is a point instead of a plane. All right. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to remove all this wood from here all the way up here 
on both sides to establish a new point. Okay, that's the way you would do it on a pencil. All right, on a pocket knife, we've got to remove. Like I said, what we're using here is a uh, Norton Crystalline Coarse Fine, and we've got the edge inked up. Okay, so what we're going to do, place the blade flat on the stone. Okay, now raise it up either until you see, until you kind of feel the flat of the edge bevel, or, um, let's see here, or until the spine is slightly up off of the the stone okay and then we're just gonna take one so we're gonna raise it up to the angle that we think that we're gonna need and then we're gonna bring one nice stroke all the way back okay now no we're gonna go back over here to the side. now you can see where that uh, where that magic marker was was abraded away. So that right there shows us that that's that's going to be a pretty good angle where we're not going to have to remove a whole lot of material to be able to get the the edge bevels all the way to the edge, okay? So all we got to do is kind of sort of match lose sleep over it at night you know as to what angle that you're sharpening at um, and if it's con perfectly consistent from stroke to stroke okay I never use any kind of jigs um, the closest thing I use to a jig in sharpening would be the spine on a straight razor and that's a built-in jig but on a pocket knife, kitchen knife, rough use knife, hunting knife, uh, big choppers, axe, uh, scissors, any of that kind of stuff, you can get it plenty close enough, you know, just by hand. You don't really need any of those fancy jigs or anything. Honestly, those jigs to me are kind of like training wheels on a bicycle. Yes, they keep you upright, you know, upright like this. And they keep you going in line so you're not going to fall, right? Well, okay, well that's all fine and great when you're starting to ride a bicycle. But then after a while, you know, like when you're a kid and you're starting to ride a bicycle and you're on those training wheels, then you see all your buddies and they're jumping curbs and, um, you know, they're going around corners laid over to the side and, you know, going really fast and everything. At some point, you need to get rid of those training wheels because they limit you as to how fast you can go, what direction you want to go that sort of thing. The same thing happens with sharpening. Um, you might want to change your edge angle just a little bit, um, you know, and raise it up just a hair. Well, if your sharpening system doesn't allow you to change the angle, then you can't do that, and you're stuck with that one angle, even though you and the knife mo both might like a slightly different angle. Okay, so on this particular knife, um, we're still nice and thin, so all we're going to do on our shaping is we're just going to uh, establish a burr. Okay, on another video, we'll take a really messed up, like a kitchen knife, and we'll, um, you know, do an awful lot more shaping on it, and I'll kind of show you how that goes. So anyhow, we're just going to work on this side for a little while. And like I said, this is the coarse side of a Norton Crystalon. And I'm starting to get a couple of burrs in places, so we're going to go to the other side. And work it down some to kind of match the other side. Okay. We're kind of start a kind of sort of starting to get there. Let's take a look at that underneath the microscope. Now wiping it off with the rag will pretty much wipe all of our uh, Okay. 
get some of that oil off my hands real quick. You see how we have, oh, no, you can't see. There you go. <coughs> you see how we have a pretty even scratch pattern, you know, from here down, but it's not all the way yet. And I'm not feeling a burr, and we don't see a burr on here. So we're getting close, but we're not quite there yet. Let's take a look at the the edge and you can see there's still some flat spots but we got a nice triangle shape going on there right which means that we just need some more time because we haven't picked up the bird and the bird will tell us when he's ready. All right. now the amount of pressure that I'm using on this stone regular oil stones you can use a lot more pressure then you can um, water stones or diamonds. If you use this amount of pressure on a diamond uh, on a diamond home, you'll start stripping the diamonds away from the uh, um, the steel or or material that they're set in. Starting to get a little bit closer. If you use this amount of pressure on a water stone. Um, you're really just kind of scraping the stone away and uh, you're not getting the abrasion on the side of the steel. Okay, But with an oil stone, you can use quite a bit more pressure. And it's one of those things that you listen to the sound. So here's very, very light. You can tell the steel is skipping over the stone and it's not really getting abraded by it. Here's a Hear that sound? That sound right there is telling you that the stone is actually cutting the steel. And you can go heavier than that, but it's not really needed. Okay, so now we're getting a burr from the heel up to about there, and then it goes away, and that's it. So we'll go on this side some more. Like I said, this is mostly just shaping. So we took off quite a bit of steel when we uh, when we dulled it up. And now we need to remove steel to that damage and a little bit past it. Okay, so now we got a burr. Nice right here, up to there. It kind of goes away right there underneath the belly and then comes back. So let's work that area a little bit more, and then we'll take a look at the burr. And when it comes to stone selection, you know, pick what you want. I mean, these... Uh... Pick them up for about 20 bucks most places, I think. Uh, they're really hard to beat. Okay, so there we go. So now you're starting to see, see how there's light reflecting there, but it's kind of, you know, in and out, in and out, in and out. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's see, which side was that burn on? Okay, so the burr is on this side here. And we'll turn it over. And right about there, you can start seeing it. Right there, that steel is kind of starting to get weakened and flaking off in little bitty bits. And there's a little bit of the damage still left from when we scraped the edge against the stone. But you can still see more and more and more of that steel getting really weak and wanting to get rid of, you know, come away from the blade. So at that point, what we're going to do inside. Okay. So our burrs on this side, so we'll go ahead and start on that side. 
and what this will do is uh, you know it's I'm not sure what the grit sizes on these are but the coarse side is for shaping it's for rapid uh, material removal and that's what you need an awful lot of times I would say probably the biggest reason that people don't have success uh, sharpening their own knives is they use they try to use too fine of a stone too fast if you do that it's like um, like I said if you were you know making a, a coffee table out of some chainsaw milled lumber and you got the the table built and right off the bat you wanted to sand it down to make it flat and make it look all pretty well if you've got chainsaw marks on that uh, on that tabletop and then you hit that that tabletop with a thousand grit sandpaper you know your kids will be old by the time you get that flat and smooth if ever but if you start off with then it'll go an awful lot faster and you might see that table completed pretty soon okay see how this light reflecting is getting less right up in here you can either see and I can't quite tell okay so that's um, uh, that's pieces of thread from uh, from the shop rag but since I only sharpened one side on the fine stone we'll show you the grit pattern okay so on this side right here versus okay let's see um, I was sharpening edge away so this side right here is going to be the coarse side see how coarse those scratches are let's get in really close okay so those right there are the coarse scratches from the coarse stone these big old chunks right here that are missing more than likely those are um, oh dang it the camera just the camera timed out okay these chunks that are missing here that look like pits okay those are um, particles of the steel being torn away from the rest of the steel okay and that's to be expected at uh, a very uh, coarse grit stone so now we go to the fine side or the sign that side that we sharpened on the fine stone where are we at there we are see how that scratch pattern is much 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 finer and you can see that our scratch pattern goes from our transition zone between the edge bevels and the or the between the blade bevels and the edge bevels it's going clear from there all the way to the um, the edge and you can still see some of that um, steel getting torn out and then if we look on this side we might be able to see Yep, see the burr right there? See those? No, that's thread. Where was that angle where we were seeing that burr really beautifully? There's that burr. See it? Now remember, I've got the knife um, canted about like this. So the edge, at the very edge, that's that burr that's turned up. So now let's go ahead and do the other side on the fine stone. So now the burr is on this side, so we want to sharpen on that side that's got the burr. And what we're doing is we're getting rid of all of those very coarse stone scratches, removing metal to, to the level of those scratches and a little bit more. we're still at fairly good pressure um, you know because we're still we're not really sharpening yet we're still shaping 
we're just shaping on a much finer stone. Not quite there yet. And like I said, you know, I mean, the angles, that's kind of another thing uh, that's really nice about the burr base sharpening, is that your angles, I mean, I don't know that the human hand can hold, you know, 20 degrees consistently for, you know, 10 minutes like this with motion. All right, so... Um, if you're off a little bit, you know, if this stroke's at 20 and the next stroke's at 18, it doesn't really matter because once you get the burr, you get the burr and you're done with that side. So now let's check it out underneath the scope. Okay, so we just got done sharpening this backside with the edge towards us. So now let's look at the edge. Okay, so see that little bit of light reflecting? That's actually the inside of the nail neck. Okay. See how everything's looking very, uh, an awful lot smoother and nicer? Okay, now that burr is going to be, it's going to be rolled over this away. Okay, so now we're pretty much done with our shaping. Let's go ahead and thing a little bit. And this one's probably going to be a long video, but that's okay. So now that we're we're done with our shaping, okay, our we got a bevel on one side with the coarse stone, we got a bevel on the other side with the other with the coarse stone. Then we move that burr back to the original side with the fine stone, and then moved it to the other side of the blade with the fine stone. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start lightening up on our pressure. Now we still need to remove material, okay? Um, but we're removing much less of it and trying to get a finer finish. So we'll start that here on this stone. And then we'll finish it up on a diamond home. So that burr I can feel is getting lighter. There's not as much of it. Okay, it's moved over the other side. Now we're just using enough pressure to get the stone to cut. Okay, now let's take another look. And I normally finish off edges Where have you heard that before, right? Uh, the, the advertisers say diamonds are a girl's best friend. Okay. So now you can see how everything is, I mean, we've still got the burr there, okay? So that burr is going to be reflecting light, you know, the sides of it. But see how much smoother everything is looking. Now we look at it from the side. See how much nicer and more even everything's looking? Anyway, I like finishing up on those diamond stones. Um, I think there's something about those diamonds um, that uh, maybe it's how sharp the corners of the diamonds are that for me, gives me a very, very crisp, clean, yet toothy um, edge. And they are my absolute favorite. So, if you don't have a diamond home, and you just want to... ...opinion on my stone selection. Uh-huh. These are pretty expensive. I think these right here are fifty, sixty, seventy dollars, something like that. Um, 
you can get the cheaper version, which is the interrupted surface. This one's also by DMT. It's that nice pretty blue. I think you can pick those up, uh, you know, maybe $30, something like that. For an average type person who's not a knife maker and who isn't sharpening, you know, a couple thousand knives a year, I think one of these would probably last an average guy a decade, you know, maybe more, something like that. For me, I go through them a lot because I sharpen a lot, an awful lot of knives. And anything that gets an awful lot of use is going to get an awful lot of wear, and it's going to wear out eventually. So anyway, so what we're going to do now is I can still feel traces of that burr. So we're going to go very light on this stone and move that burr over a bit. There it is. Now we're going to go on this side. And like I said, I'm still kind of sort of trying to maintain that same angle. And I don't know what that angle was. And honestly, it doesn't really matter because it's going from our transition zone all the way to the, the very end of the edge. And we know it's doing that because we're picking up burrs. And we're moving that burr back and forth. So if it's 17 degrees or if it's 20 degrees or if it's 22 degrees, you know, the burr is letting us know that we're done with, with each case. I'm not quite getting a burr on that side. I think I was going a little bit more of an angle there. I don't normally sharpen, you know, with my hips twisted away from this, so it's, um, that's giving me a little bit of grief. Okay. So, now we can check that burr out one more time, and then we're going to get rid of it. Now, see how fine that scratch pattern looks? It's nice and clean. It's going from the transition area to the edge. You can see bits and pieces of, of the burr flaking off. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of that burr. we got about four minutes to do it before i got to go pick my boy up from school. Anyway, so we're going to, just a couple of passes to really weaken what's left of that burr up. Which we don't have much of a burr on here at all. So we just need to weaken it, right? Now, whatever your sharpening angle was, you're going to want to almost double that. And then very, very lightly, probably less than the weight of the blade, you're going to want to shear that burr off. Again, you could, you could strop that burr off, you know, bend it back and forth over a leather strop, like a leather belt, old leather belt. Don't use the same strop for sharpening pocket knives that you do on your straight razors. Otherwise, you'll leave bits and pieces of steel in your, your fine leather strop, and um, it'll play havoc on your straight razor edges. Okay, so that feels like our burr is gone. Let's double check. Bring you back up here. Now, we should not be reflecting light anymore. up. Here we go, I went past it. Okay, now bring you into focus. Right there. There's still a couple of very, very small amounts of light, but they're not near like what we saw um, in the beginning. And this could be that, um, you know, this could be the, the bottom of the deep scratches left by the coarse stone since I, you know, rushed through this really fast. But anyway, this right here is going to be a very serviceable edge. And then from the side, you can see just the smallest amounts of steel still hanging on there, which that could have been from, um, you know, maybe I didn't get all the burr off, but you know, those little bitty pits, little bitty pieces of steel like that aren't really going to affect your cutting performance after that first cut. 
So let's see if we can get that same angle that we were getting earlier. There. I just got to hold steady. Okay, so that's reflecting down the side of the blade. And you can see right there in the middle is one little flake of steel that's left of the burr. There's another one. There's a couple more in there. But this should still be a serviceable edge. I mean, it feels good and sharp. Um, let's see if... Oh yeah, I've got plenty of hair left on my arm. Here we go. Yep, I can see them popping off. Now the blade's covered with, with Joe's arm hair. And Joe's got a big old bald, bald spot on his arm. Okay, so I've got about 30 seconds left. Nutshell is we actually got it sharpened up. So that is your edge angle, how it's not quite as important as what you might think. you know 18 degrees or you know 25 degrees you know that kind of control of your angles will come with practice in the beginning just look for um, shaping the edge getting the burr moving the burr from one side to the other side then off your shaping stone then use a finer stone to refine that burr okay to smooth out your scratch patterns on the on each side of your edge bevels okay once you're done with the fine stone but keep the burr because you're going to want to use that burr to let you know when you're ready to take it off so then once you go to your finer stone um, you know refine everything if the finer stone like on a Norton crystalline is all you got go ahead and shear the burr off with that that fine fine side it'll be more than you know good enough for most most uses if you do have a finishing stone like a, you know a, a 325 diamond, go ahead and weaken that burr a little bit more, refine it just the last little bit, shear the burr off, and bam, you'll have a sharp edge. You can't not have a sharp edge. If you shape it, bring your burr, move the burr to the other side, use the burr to tell you on the next finer stone when you're done with each side, weaken that burr up, and remove the burr, you have to have a sharp edge. Anyway, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can find me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. I sincerely hope that you pick up a knife and a couple of stones and start practicing. You give this a couple of hours of, of good practice, and I would, I'd be real surprised if you weren't getting knives sharper when you were done with them than what they were when you started which if you can get a knife sharper after you work on it than what it was before you worked on it, then you are well on your way to sharpening well. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video, and we will see you next time.